Greetings. My name is Dr. Erica Cirillo McCarthy, and I'm the director of the Margaret H. Ordabadian University Writing Center here at MTSU. In the previous workshop, we discussed how writers go through various stages as they move through the writing process. In this workshop, we'll take a look at what type of writer you are and reflect on your writing identity in order to hone, shape, and improve your writing process. As we discussed before, writing would be much easier if the writing process were a simple matter of moving through these stages in a step-by-step -step way. And sometimes it is. Sometimes you might think of a topic and generate ideas for it. Then you draft and organize those ideas in essay form, adjusting content as you revise. Finally, you read the essay over, add or delete a few sentences, and correct some spelling errors. Now you might have thought that all writers move through these stages sequentially, completing one and moving on to the next without looking back. However, writing is often more messy and less orderly. It's a lot like working your way through a maze. Sometimes you go down one path before going back and trying another until you eventually get to the end. The writing process is recursive, meaning we move forward by looking backward at what we've already written to reevaluate what we've said, to make changes, and often to think of new ideas. Not all of your ideas will come to you in the invention stage. Even experienced writers do not arrive at all of their ideas before they write. Writers often read and write to brainstorm. Then they read some more, talk to other people, begin drafting, maybe decide to refocus the essay, read some more, free write, maybe write a new thesis statement, throw out huge sections of a paper and important new material, revise the new draft heavily, and finally proofread and edit. Now, consider how you wrote your last paper for a moment. Did you move in a step-by-step -step manner? Or did you write in a more disorderly manner? Many of us write in a back and forth recursive progression, but it's really easy to feel lost or helpless when writing does not follow a neat linear process. Just as you walk around with ever-changing complex thoughts in your head, those thoughts will shift and remain complex and at times pretty disorderly when you put them down on paper. Different writers have distinct writing habits that also dictate how they write. Lisa Ede, a, a scholar in composition studies, has identified four basic trends among writers. The first type of writer is a heavy planner. These writers generally consider their ideas and plan their writing so carefully in their heads that their first drafts are often more like other writers' second or third drafts. As a consequence, they often revise less frequently than other writers. Many heavy planners have disciplined themselves so that they can think about their writing in all sorts of places, on the subway, in the garden pulling weeds, or in the car driving to and from school, or in the case here at MTSU, waiting online at Starbucks. The next type of writer is the heavy reviser. These writers need to find out what they want to say through the act of writing itself. Heavy revisers often state that writing their ideas out in a sustained spurt of activity reassures them that they have something to say and helps them avoid uh, feeling frustration. These writers may not, may not seem to plan because they begin drafting so early, but actually, however, their planning occurs as they draft and especially as they revise. Heavy revisers typically spend a great deal of their writing time revising their initial drafts. And to do so effectively, they must be able to read their work critically and to discard substantial portions of their first draft. The next type of writer is a sequential composer. These writers devote roughly equal amount of time to planning, drafting, and revising. Sequential composers typically rely on written notes and plans to give shape and force to their ideas. And unlike heavier revisers, 
sequential composers need to have greater control over form and subject matter as they draft. So what that means is these writers often slowly squeeze out paragraph after paragraph, rereading and revising as they draft, working from outlines, and planning ahead. Finally is the procrastinators. Although we all occasionally procrastinate, the group Eid labels as procrastinators are people who habitually delay writing and anything at all until they can only write a first draft. They might wait until the night before a paper is due to begin. Therefore, they only have time to scribble out one draft and maybe if they're lucky to proofread it before handing it in. Now, procrastinators may justify their process by saying, oh, they work well under a deadline. Does that sound familiar? But they've rarely explored alternative approaches. So do any of these writing trends sound familiar? You might find that you exhibit a combination of these approaches or even experience a different process depending on whether you're writing an essay for a history class or a summary of a lab experiment. The important thing is not to pinpoint exactly what kind of writer you are, but the focus and the goal here is to recognize your general tendencies and consider the advantages and disadvantages of your approach. Um, to really evaluate how you've been doing things and to see if it would be useful to try something new. You're going to benefit from knowing your own writing habits in this way. So now we invite you to reflect on your own writing identity. Access the handout entitled Your Writing Identity and answer the following questions. What type of writer do you consider yourself to be? Does your writing process include aspects from multiple approaches? Maybe you're a little bit of a heavy reviser and a procrastinator? And if so, which ones? Does your writing process serve your writing goals? What are the strengths and weaknesses of your writing process? Do you think you might benefit from a different approach? And what might you do? And then finally, how does your writing identity connect to who you are as a learner? We hope that once you've completed this reflection, you'll be able to move forward with more awareness of how the writing process best works for you. Thank you so much and we'll see you soon.